<laughs> All right, so welcome back to another DTS. Um, we are going to be close start. We're in the final process of closing out this lesson on how to study the Bible. So today we're going to be going through tools to use when studying the Bible. And then if we get through that, we will actually do our practice session on studying curses. Like how would you go about finding scriptures based upon what your study is about to make sure you're not going down rabbit holes and things of that nature. So to start out, um, as you see, we use Bible Gateway a lot here at Gather. So I'm going to start to talk about Bible Gateway, go through a couple of different functions that I use. If other people use different functions, point that out and I'll demonstrate that. Because there is a lot to these apps that you could use and I don't exhaust the possibilities when I'm using them. Um, so if other people have dibbled and dabbled into other features, definitely point that out. So let me state this, um, Bible Gateway, um, this is a, a wonderful app because it contains various translations of the Bible, allowing you to conduct passage searches in any translation. So if I go here, this is the drop down. I'm going to go from the beginning. Um, it starts with 21st century King James Version. You got the American Standard Version, Amplified, Amplified Classic. Sorry, Amplified, Amplified Classic. Um, so I'm just going to scroll, and you can take a look as I'm scrolling. Because what I've heard is other people that use other apps sometimes when I'm teaching them scripture, they'll be like, oh, I don't have that translation. And so I just always tell people, you need to download Bible Gateway because they pretty much got almost every translation. I'm not going to say they have every single translation, but they have the majority of the translations here. So as you can see, if you're doing Bible studies and you want to kind of see if you can find a translation that maybe reads it easier or what does another translation say, you can just use this drop down and go. And this is the last translation, the Young's Literary Translation. But you can see there are a host oops, of various translations here that you can use. So that's one thing I want to point out about Bible Gateway. Um, you can conduct keyword searches uh, based on a word. Um, you can also do phrases to find them in the Bible. So I'm going to go here. Um, let me see. Let me blow this up. Okay. So I need to hold on, y'all. Okay. Let me make this smaller. I just can't see the whole screen. Just a second. Oh, maybe I need to do this. This window. Yeah. Let me shrink the window. Okay. And then let me blow this back up. Okay. So if I was to, oh, this is different. It's different from on your phone than on the computer. That's what it is. Okay, so if I wanted to do a word search, I can do abomination, put that in. And what it will do is it will start to show me there are 144 Bible results for abomination. Um, you can also do your search if you want to begin on a translation. So I think normally... I'll switch between King James and New King James when I do my searches, but I try to do them in King James. So let me go here. So I'm going to do the word search for abomination in KJV. And as you can see, it's a difference. It comes up with 142 versus the New King James, which had 144. Because certain translations use terms more frequently than others. Um, and like English Standard Version or easy to read, it'll use more common language. So if I was to look up a common language word, maybe in easy to read versus KJV, it may show no results in KJV where it shows in the other translations. So, but you get the idea. So off to your right, 
it'll show you all the passages, not passages, but books that that scripture will be in the Old Testament. So you can see how many times this term is used in Old Testament based on KJV. Um, and then New Testament, you'll see how many times is there. So what you can do is you're going to see when we do our search on curses, we're just going to put that term in and it gives you each verse as you scroll. It'll give you an order based on what we see here on this side. It's going to go in order. And you'll and you can read each passage. And if you need to see context. It'll give you the scripture before and after that. Or I can go back and do full chapter if I need to read more verses around that to get an understanding. Are you going to talk about uh, first mention? You should speak up. Are you going to talk about first mention? <laughs> uh, what do you mean? Like you guys told me, looking up certain words, go to the first time it was mentioned in the Bible to kind of get, uh, I guess, a uh, origin. Yeah, a gauge on because multiple words have multiple words. It just depends on what I'm searching. I don't particularly go by that, um, depend because it just depends on what I'm searching. Once I get a collection of what I'm trying to figure out, then from there I may drill it down even more. But initially, I just need to see where this is at in the Bible and if I need this particular passage. Does it speak to what I'm studying? That's where I start because I think that can start to spin you off. Well, let me go here and let me do it first. Just collect what you need first, and then you can go back and do whatever you need to do. Um, so... That's just the order of how that's doing that. Um, if you wanted to search like um, a phrase, what you would need to do is I think you have to do like a, a star. Um, what would it be? Uh, what would be a phrase? Love of God. And then do another star. That contains the phrase in, so it knows to try to search for that in the scriptures versus all the scriptures that show love, God, blah, blah, blah. And I don't know if I did that right because it's been a minute since I did that. And I don't even know if there's something that says love of God. Um, but it would try to find what you're looking for. I can't think of a, like a short phrase. You huh? I said you learn to say Lord, thy God. Wait, what? You say you Lord, thy God. Yeah, Lord, thy like God. the Lord. Something that you see that's already in there. So that way you can see... Fear of what? Uh, what is, is that? that? Is that? Fear that? Of the Lord. I think that's what they said. Like something that we just saw. I think they just said that. Yeah, it still separates it though. Cause you said it'll be there, together. Yeah, there's a way. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be. Oh, let me do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that might be. It. I think it's quotes. Oh. And then I'll try for this because I don't. I remember doing from this. Yeah, it, it says it's it. okay. So what it is, you have to do quotes around it. So it will bring up all the places, and it shows you here again off to the side where you're gonna see it, and then it brings all those scriptures up. So if you want to search by a phrase, put it in quotes. Or you can do a single word and just type in the word. Okay. okay. So um, another thing about Bible Gateway, you can use the audio feature that comes with a few translations. So audio doesn't come for all translations, but it does come for some. And KJV is one. So if it has audio, you'll see this here and it won't be grayed out. So if I click on this, It starts to play. Um, now, based on how we got everything hooked up, we can't probably hear it. I don't know what to do to get it to. What it, oh, sorry. You can say share the screen. So, I'll just, I, I can just easily select that back. You know. So, when you click on the audio, it comes up here. 
and you'll be able to hear it. We got the speaker connection and stuff like that, so that's why you can't hear it, but um, that's there. So I'm gonna put this back, get rid of that. Now, if I was to, no, nah, I'm getting rid of that because now I'm going back to this. They, I have the screen in front of me. I can see what they can see. They can see the screen. Yeah, I'm looking at them. They're watching this screen. I can. I have my other screen with them on here. Yeah, I, I'm sharing. I'm sharing this tab. I wasn't sharing that tab with the with the audio. Yeah, I slid it over here. No, I guess I didn't. Yeah, yeah like you couldn't see, see that. that. I'm sorry. Okay, hold on. You gotta push. You can just uh, push the microphone again. What's that called? Speaker. Yeah. And then push share this tab instead. Yeah. Now that's one. Okay. There it is. Oh. <laughs> right. Like, we're gonna make Christ. Christ. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, is reading it to you. By his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. And it's here. Concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord. Which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. And if you don't like this voice, go back to the other tab. Share this tab instead. Okay. So, thank you. Now I'm getting rid of that. Okay, if I was to. So you see this button here. If I go to. Let's go to this translation. I don't think. App Amplified doesn't have it. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I think that it is. Or it's classic. What is it, right? Both of them. Mm-hmm. Okay, so with Amplified, you can see the speaker's not there. So this one doesn't have the ability to read to you. So you'll be able to tell which translation can read based on if you see a speaker there. So just know that that's a feature. So um, I use that when I don't know how to pronounce certain words and I know I have to teach. Um, if I catch it in time and I'm like, oh, I know I'm going to have to say this in class. I will just go to that chapter because you can't go to verses. It's going to read the whole chapter. Um, so I'll just go to that chapter, hit the speaker, let it read it out so I can hear how to articulate certain words. So definitely use that. Um, with Bible Gateway, you can use their topical index for Bible studies. Let me see if I remember because I don't use that. So if you hit this Three, is that a burger? They call it a burger? Yeah, they do call it Okay. Hit the burger. Um, um, you can do read the Bible. It has some materials there. They have study tools here. Explore Bible Gateway Store. Okay. Maybe they took it away. Um, let's see what's here. Because they've updated the app, so... Maybe it's not there. Um, they used to have a topical index for Bible studies. Let me go back. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's still going. Back over here. Scripture engagement. Was. <clears throat> No. Okay, they must have took it away. So I'll take that off of the sheet. Or do you have to sign in? Mm-hmm. I didn't used to have to sign in. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know. They probably I can't figure that out. So, because um, they also used to have daily devotionals there. That's not there either. So I'll take all that stuff off. Yeah, huh? the devotionals were there. Yeah, yeah I saw that. There's one that's one more, I think, for under explore more. Okay. You said under where? Explore more. Oh, okay. There's a devotional. So, like, if you wanted to do devotional, I don't know why this stuff isn't coming up. Okay. I've never used this, so I couldn't tell you about it, but it's there. So you could just play around with the app and, um, you know. I've used the devotionals, and I'll just point out, now that I know scripture, they do come from a um, 
non-denominational, which is mostly Trinitarian standpoint, and most of those, you say, like, they, what is it, deceived, I guess you could say, like, mm -hmm. the, the people who are doing these, putting their own, like, a 30-day, 40-day devotional, mm -hmm. they're usually Trinitarian, so they're coming from that perspective, so you definitely got to be careful of the verbiage and the wording when they're doing their personal message, and then putting scripture to align with it. So if you're going to do a devotional, just put it out there to make sure you actually go in deep into the scripture that they're using. Because I've done it, and I was like, ooh, this is not right. <laughs> yeah, they took it away, because I have it. Trimaker. Yes, go ahead. Are you looking for the reading plan? No, they had, because I have in front of me on my, I did a screenshot. They used to have a category called study. And under study, they had topical index, devotionals, reading plans, newsletters. They took away the topical index. They still have the devotionals and they still have the reading plans. But let me go there just to kind of see. Because they used to have a topical study index. Is that like? Where you can do studies based on topics. I'm saying you can't search it. It's not there. It was an actual link. So it's nothing to search. It was an actual link. I got the screenshot where it was a link. They took it. Oh, let me see. Is it under here? Nope. But this is reading plan. So if you wanted to do a reading plan, this is what they offer. So they got, if you want to read the Bible in 90 days, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it uh, look like it's like topical yeah, I think that's it. Where'd you get that from? Okay, so I have to figure out how I got it. Hold uh, on, oh, sorry. We're trying to figure out. <laughs> I just got to. Uh, we can always come back to it. Yeah, keep going. Let me figure out how I just got it. All right, so this is one, uh, which is Bible Gateway. So. Again, highly recommend that. We'll be coming back to this when we start doing the search on curses. Now I'm going to go to Blue Letter Bible. So, Blue Letter Bible. Blue Letter Bible looks like this. Now, the way that I use this, they have many features, which I do not partake of, but you can definitely play around with it. Um, I mainly use, for me, Blue Letter Bible. After I find all the scriptures that I need to in Bible Gateway, if I need to see a particular word in Hebrew or Greek, then I will come to Blue Letter Bible because I'm able to look that up um, to see what, like what an actual meaning of the word is. So let's say for instance, um, I am going to just do a scripture. Let's do, Oh, you got it. Yeah. Let so, me go back. I'm sorry. I'm gonna go back to Bible gateway. Well, while you're doing it, go type in Bible gateway. I'm in, I'm in Bible. No, I know, because this is the only way I got it. Um, to get what you... I'm not even that serious. Oh, all you got to do is just put in topics. Like, the gateway, just type in that at the top. You already got the gateway.com. Just put the, what is that? Oh. And then topics. Yep. Yep, there it is. Okay. So, I don't know. We had to do Bible Gateway, put that in, and then do forward slash topics, forward slash. But this is a topical index here. So it says, do you want to know what the Bible says about popular topical searches of the Bible? Each Bible Gateway topic page includes Bible passages that are relevant to the subject and brief excerpts from acclaimed Bible reference books that provide insight and understanding on the respective topic. So they already have the topics here. It's not like you can create your own topic. 
So, um, and again, most of these, I wouldn't trust this one. It's like, <laughs> I don't know what to say, but it's probably going to be wrong. Um, but, so, again, no, that's here. there. Okay, yeah, she got this. I'm like, you going to go again? Um, <laughs> we teach truth here. It, this could be error. Um, so, I don't know. You have to just go through and play through. They do have, like, Acts 238 here. Um, repent and be baptized. Repentance was important in the message of the forerunner John the Baptist. And so they'll give you reference scriptures for John the Baptist. They say the preaching of Jesus. So it looks like as they're saying stuff, they're giving you other reference scriptures. So you can go back and take a look at this stuff. Um, so it looks like they pick scriptures that have the word baptized in it. And then they'll mention some stuff. This passage is talking about wash your sins away. Baptism, see, is the outward sign of an inward work of grace. So that's why I don't like to read reference, like on commentary. I don't use like Bible Gateway or Blue Letter Bible for commentary. Because again, that commentary is written by other people. And if they're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, they're coming from a humanistic perspective of logic trying to understand it versus God gave them revelation on it. That is a major difference. So just know that when it comes to people's commentaries. I've In the beginning, I used to read them, but the more I grew in my relationship with God and started to see the difference in what he was saying and what they were saying, um, he just you know really advised me to stay away from it. Really quick, though. I might have missed this. Yes. So with the topical studies, us having this information, why do what was what's the relevance to this? Thing? If you just wanted to kind of look up, because usually with topical studies, it'll at least give you all the scriptures related to that topic. So if you like, I don't even know what scriptures to kind of gotcha. relate it to this. Th- this would be an easy way because now you're getting all these other reference scriptures that you can go back and look up on your own and see what it's saying. But it's up to you to know, like, wash your single and then the grace. And I like, this is where the commentary, like, we would need to be yeah, just, say mature in Christ to know that. Because if somebody reads that, they wouldn't know. Yeah, that. so I probably would not. Because I don't, when I do, when I've started doing this now and advising people on how to study the Bible, I don't even mention going to commentaries at all. Exactly. So... Uh, which is probably why it's so hard to find this. We probably shouldn't be looking at this. <laughs> okay, yeah, because that's why I'm, that's why I'm like elaborating a little bit more because I'm like, it wouldn't make sense if we were to teach this to somebody and then say, but no, don't look at it because then they could get kind of confused. Well, yeah, so when I wrote this lesson, it was like a long time ago. Exactly. I'm definitely further along in understanding things than I did when I first wrote this lesson. So um, I'm going to clean that part up and take that out. Got you. Okay. So... I will take it out of my phone. Okay, so let's go back to Blue Letter Bible. This one, that is it. I so Okay, so I was trying to think of. Let me go to. I think it's. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Okay, so here, this scripture I'm going to go to says, The woman shall not wear that which pertain unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are and are for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord God. So I'm going to look up what this word abomination means in the Hebrew, because this is Old Testament. Old Testament is in Hebrew. New Testament is in Greek. So if I click on Deuteronomy 22 and 5, and just to explain what the scripture is talking about, it's basically talking about cross-dressing. We see that happening in our society. Men putting on heels and makeup and wearing dresses and switching. Abomination. Women dressing like dudes, taping their breasts down so they can look flat, wearing, like trying to come off like a, a dude. Abomination. That's what this is talking about. This is not talking about women cannot wear pants. Stop the foolishness. I just wanted to point uh, out, I peep that you want to make sure we get your word of abomination in. Because last week, we definitely, <laughs> y'all noticed that? I'm like, we can't. Because I can't think of. She's like, no, y'all lost. Curse did not win, but uh, we got abomination. I just want to 
It's not on purpose. All right, so. <laughs> Um, that cursor is coming. So, this scripture is now being broken down. Now that I clicked on Deuteronomy 22 and 5, every phrase, however, is broken up. It's broken up, and if you click on this, that will provide you the Hebrew. And you can see the Hebrew word here, and it written out in Hebrew. So, I'm going to scroll till I find can abomination. You for a yes, this is where I sorry. Actually need help with this. So I get to this point. I get that all of it is broken down yes. in the English term. I get the H. Now, is there any significance to the numbers? Because that's why. I, I yeah, think. Strong's. They also have like a concordance. If you had that concordance, you would use those numbers to find that in the concordance. So you didn't know that. Okay. So then, what is? Okay. So explain the whole world and its relevance. Okay. Let me get to them. let me get to my word here, <laughs> and then we will do that. Instead of going up here, I can use one word and break it down, and then you could apply that to the rest. <laughs> All right, so abomination. You got the word here in English. You have the Strong's Concordance number here. Then you have that word spelled out, and it's in Hebrew. It's broken down here to Aba. I think that's how it's pronounced, but if you're not sure, you can click on this. Strong's H A four forty one, to Eva, to Eva, to Eva. So it helps you to say the word properly, and I love that because this is here for you. Um, so in order to see the breakdown of this English word, which is in Hebrew, I'm going to click on the Strong's concordance number here. When I click on that, it takes me here. So it gives me the transliteration, to'aba, or to'aba, the pronunciation, they break it down. So if you were, if you didn't have this, this is how you would say it, to'aba, to'aba. But you always have this here. Strong's H, A441, to'aba, to'aba. Okay, so that's that. Huh? Okay. What? Oh, okay. So then it says part of speech. The part of speech. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to know all of this, that's here. Um, KJV translation count. So abomination is in KJV 113 times. Abominable thing is found in King James Version two times. Abominable is found in King James Version two times. So you got how many times in that translation it's found in scripture. Then it says outline of biblical usage. So it's going to start to define that word for you. Abomination is a disgusting thing. It uses the same word to, to define it, which I don't like. Abomination, abominable. So, A, abomination could be in ritual sense of unclean food, of idols, of mixed marriages. Um, B means, it can also be in an, ethic, in an ethical sense, meaning of wickedness. Okay. So you go down to Strong's definitions. Toeba is feminine active particle. Properly, something disgusting, meaning morally, it's disgusting morally. Example, as a noun, an abhorrence, especially idolatry, or concretely, meaning an actual idol. Abominable, meaning in custom or theme. Abomination. Then you scroll down here. It starts to kind of give you some kind of like adjectives, but then it'll give you scriptures to kind of explain what they mean. Absolute. You can go to the scripture to see what it's talking about. And it says, and they set on for him, I'm sorry, and they set on for him by himself and for them by themselves and for the Egyptians which did eat with him by themselves because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews for that is an abomination unto the Egyptians. So it's trying to give you a scripture to go along with what it's saying here. 
Um, so you can kind of see how that's working. Um, they do a little bit more of breakdowns here. A ritual sense. What does it mean to be an abomination? So Israel sacrifices. Um, they'll give you a scripture. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. So we know the plagues were coming on the Egyptians because not only would Pharaoh not let the people go, but all the things that they were doing was an abomination. All of their practices were to serve their false gods. So, and that was why God was making a distinction between Israel and the Egyptians. Israel serves me, y'all serving false gods, and this is going to be the result of your abominable actions. So, you know, you can just keep reading through stuff like that. Um, you, can, you can hit this because you see it cuts off. So if you hit show all, it drops that and you can see more here. More like uses. Yeah. Um, so like, can you go back to the top of it? So abomination being absolute, I take those words and then the following scriptures are how they apply that definition to those scriptures. Yep. And then the next one, so I think one, a ritual sense, A, Israel sacrifice. And then you're going to read that definition of abomination in Exodus 8.22, in Genesis 42-34, Genesis 43-32, and then it goes to a physical repugnance song, I mean, and you're going to read the definition of it. Can you start over word? and just sort of? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because I'm trying I to speak clearly. Okay. Yeah, like I'm not, you're not processing anything. So. Huh? Go ahead. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just slow down and like, yeah. So I can, I'm following along with my eyes. All right. Can you go back to the top of my mind? So the first definition is abomination being absolute. Which is right there. Okay. Yes. So then those scriptures that follow, those are the scriptures that you can define abomination being absolute. Gotcha. All of the ones that before you get to Second Chronicles. Before you I mean get the first construct. before you get to construct. Construct. Okay, that's where I was getting. Okay, got it. So got then it, you it. see construct, and then the scriptures that follow construct are the scriptures with abomination that you can define abomination meaning construct. Gotcha. So, then so it would be the Ezekiel and the Second Chronicles. Gotcha. Okay. But then you go to one and it's saying ritual sense, and mm -hmm. A, the ritual sense being Israel's sacrifices. Mm -hmm. You find that definition of abomination in the scriptures to follow it. So Exodus gotcha. eight twenty two, Genesis forty six thirty four, and Genesis forty three thirty two. Keep scroll over forty three thirty two. And then you keep on scrolling past like the words you see of. And the next thing to follow is physical repugnance. So physical repugnance, repugnance is that definition is found in Psalm 88.9. So what was the difference between what Nico just said? Oh, no, I was just trying to make it like more clear. I saw it. Well, she was saying it right. Okay, because I was just trying to make sure, because you said it's easier, your way is easier. Because so. like when I, I was just saying like, when I first first looked at it, I was like, this is a lot of words and a lot of scripture. Gotcha. I didn't understand at first that they were saying like the definition, the scripture that apply, another definition, the scripture that apply. To me, it just looked like a whole bunch of mumble jumble. So okay. I was trying to explain it in a way that would have helped me when I first looked at it. That's so it. you're saying look at the word and then go to that specific scripture. Yeah, yeah. it's a reference. Okay. So they'll okay. give you the breakdown, different ways that abomination is broken down in an absolute way, then it provides all the scriptures. So when you see the black word, you're now starting another like way to describe abomination, and then those scriptures after that will apply to that black word. Mm -hmm. Then you get the construct. It's a black word, and now you see all the scriptures in blue that relates to that. Oh. Then you get to ritual sense. That's in black. So that's now awesome. to define ritual sense, it says Israel sacrifices. Now you see all the scriptures that relate to Israel sacrifices, in blue. Then you get to uh, repun physical repugnance. That's in black. So it's, again, defining 
another elaboration of abomination, and you see, see the scripture next to that, is in blue. So that's related to physical repugnance. Then you get to B, to God and his people um, of unclean food. Now you're going to see a scripture related to unclean food. Worshipper of idols. Now you're going to see a scripture related to that. So it really helps you if you don't understand, like, okay, so, you know, worshiping idols is an abomination. Like, what does that mean? What does that look like? They give you a scripture. Go to the scripture, read the scripture. That should open up your understanding on how God sees that as an abomination. Got it. So just taking a homosexuality, could we go to that just so we can see, like, if we were studying that since we're talking about, because that's an abomination. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. So is that in here? I just want to, like, see an example. Or we could just use the one you just did. That's why I was trying to think of the scripture. Hold on. Let me grab it because I just wrote some stuff out um, in another lesson. Huh? You're not in the scripture? No, she said, like, relate to homosexuality. So let me grab that. I'm just saying, like, just as an example, so if we're studying, because that's one of my issues, how to find that specific uh, scriptures that is related to that that says it's an abomination. Like, we're doing that now with this, um, just for the word abomination. But I'm just giving an example of that. Well, was that what you were saying? saying or, yeah. Like, how would you find the scripture yes. if you didn't know the scripture yes. already? That's yes. why I said... Yeah. How would you find it in here? You can go to Bible Gateway and just type in the and phrase. type in the phrase and find it that way. That's why we're using multiple okay. tools. Yes. Okay. Now that's why you have to tell me because yeah. then I would have been like, okay. That's what I. That's what I'm okay. saying. I don't know. Or what you could do. Okay, so let me go back and start over with her question. Yes. Okay, so her question is, what if I wanted to find a scripture on homosexuality so that I can research it in Blue Letter Bible? That is why we use Bible Gateway, because you can do phrase searches. You can also use Google, which I'm going to show you that, too, because a lot of times when I'm trying to find scripture and I kind of know, but you got to kind of know how the scripture go to find it in Google. Um, so I'm going to just switch this back or I'm going to go and switch the view. For, I'll switch the view for you guys in just a second. Let me pull up Bible Gateway. OK, so I'm back in Bible Gateway. So let's just do a search. I'm going to go to, I think New King James Version actually says the word homosexuality. So I can find that scripture. But there's multiple ways we can do this. So this is good because we just, we're learning. Um, and then once I'm done with this lesson, y'all can let me know if I should post this. I'm recording, but I don't think this is going to help you because you can't see what I'm doing. So I probably won't post this. Uh, New King James. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to type in, how did they put the word homosexual? I'm going to just put homosexual. I'm trying to remember how a version put it. Okay, so it is a New King James. So in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, there, after no adulterers nor homosexuals, when I go back, because I got to see again, let me see. Y'all not going to be able to see this real quick, but let me see what the translations are. Okay, I can't do New King James. Okay, so we got this scripture in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Let me switch the view for you all. I'm going to go back to Blue Letter Bible. Because, again, you're using multiple tools. Uh, I'm going to put in 1 Corinthians 6, 9. And I changed this because this is a drop down. You can change the translations. It was on King James. I'll change it to New King James so we can find that. Hit enter. Is that what I got to hit? Uh, okay. So we see that scripture here where it says, no adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites. So I'm going to click on 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. It starts to break things down. But I think the breakdown, the breakdown is going to be in KJV. So that's why I got to know, what did KJV use that word as versus New King James said homosexual? So I'm going to look for adulterers because the next word after that was the word that New King James translated as homosexual. Let me pause. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, so I'm just trying to figure out more so 
we know that homosexuality is an abomination and you were looking up and we were focused on abomination so I wanted to know if homosexuality would come up in abomination if we were studying okay. like if I was doing the term study. homosexual no because that was not a term that they used back then okay. got it see that's so yeah you have to so help me understand if the term wasn't used back then how would you go about studying that like if you were so to know that so what I was going to do was I was going to go to the actual scripture that talked about it. Okay. So let me do that. Um, does that make sense? It does. Okay. So that's what I was originally looking up. So let me find that scripture so I can pull that up. Got it. Um, hold that's on. nice to know, though. I did not know that, I don't know if this sounds ignorant or not, but there were specific terms that wasn't used. So like homosexuality, I didn't know that. So, for instance, if I go to Leviticus 18 and 22. I'm going to go back to King James Version because when, when you look things up in blue letter, that breakdown is going to be in KJV. Okay. It ain't going to be in the modern translation. So, let's go back and do our search here and Bible Gateway using KJV, so we can see the actual language. So in KJV, in Leviticus 18 and 22, it says here, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Mm -hmm. That's talking about homosexuality. It does not use the term homosexuality because that wasn't a term that they used back then. All I know is you a man, you lying with a man, you shouldn't be doing that. They didn't have this term... What do we call people that are men that lie with other men, have sex with other men? Let's create, let's have a board meeting and create a term for this. No, there wasn't a term. They just said, man should not lie with man. And I'll show another scripture which talks about in, in um, Romans 1, I think it's verse 21 or 20, no, 26 or somewhere in there. It says that women did change the natural use to a non-natural use and they were basically doing things with each other. So that was how they kind of worried it, a woman doing something with another woman or a man doing something with another man. So you would just have to take that scripture and then start to maybe go into um, Blue Letter Bible and start to look up each term to see kind of like what it's saying. Yeah, what I just got, definitely not putting, I'm not saying, not adding words to scripture, going back to what you always teach you and Donovan. Because I'm focused, I was focused on, okay, let's find something that says homosexual. Right. But when we're witnessing to people, they like, oh, well, don't say the word homosexual, whatever like that. But yeah. scripture does plainly say mankind and womankind. So yep. just sticking with that and taking that word out. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. now I like get it and not to add words to because now I'm like, you yeah. don't even have to say homosexual. It's just yeah. say it right there. Yeah. I mean, that makes it plain. A man yeah, shouldn't lie with yeah. another person that's not a woman like yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. So, um, okay, so Nina, turn. Yes. So we looked up abominations and we would have came across the first Corinthian scripture. If we were to kept, because we, like, I would have to go you, back and, I need to go back. Yeah, I would say your knowledge is filtering the gaps for me, and I, I don't know. Because if we were to just stuck with the abominations, we would have found, well, we have found the homosexual statement. Well, remember, too, if you were doing a search on abominations, you would have came across the scripture that I just took you to, which was Leviticus 18.22, because that word abomination is, there. If, if, so is here. In that, in that, in the abomination breakdown, huh? Can we look for this scripture in that abomination breakdown? Yeah. So for what I was saying was, because I know she was showing me one thing. I think everybody was had different points that they were trying to make. So for you, I would not go to the scripture that I was in in Deuteronomy mm -hmm. twenty-two and five and try to find this. I would find this in Bible Gateway, then plug this but scripture in blue letters. Because remember, we started in the Bible Gateway just finding abominations. So yeah. I came with just abominations. It took me to Blue Letter Bible. I still don't know this yet. It took me to Blue Letter Bible, so now I got all these definitions. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know these. I don't know the First Corinthians yet. I don't know the Leviticus yet. So, okay. how, like, how do I keep? We can go back to the scripture that I was in and see if I can find that to, to see. see. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Yes, go ahead. Back 
faster process? Like you were just showing us how blood right works with the oh, okay. Yeah. Like, I think the disconnect is normally we would go, we would just go and move, I mean, what's the other part? Bible gateway. We would see all those scriptures, we would write them down. And then we would begin looking at them. Oh, so I would have already seen You would have seen all Thank those scriptures. You. And then as you look at them and you start to study I them. I mean, maybe. It depends on what you're doing. But yeah. The, the yeah. That, 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 that you should have. Yeah, because originally, remember what I told you all. Like she said, yeah. is the, you going to first start in Bible Gateway, put your term in, pull all those scriptures. Like, you got to know the scripture. I'm like, how? Because you should have done, yeah, the, the first right step down, of writing all the scriptures down. Like, well, because people were asking specific questions. So that's why we're going to do the curses. Because okay. then we're going to be starting from the beginning. Okay. Yeah. I was just giving an example and people start throwing questions out. So I'm just answering the questions okay. as they come. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah. I give it now because I would have wrote it down and I would be like, oh, here, here. Yeah, yeah. now it all makes sense. That's yeah. good. Whew. All right. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. See how it works. Well, I'm still know. going through all the tools so we can do the study. Because if you don't know what tools to use, it's, it's so. putting the cart before the horse. Oh. So let me well, see, finish. We're using the tools, but we yeah. don't know how they work because we don't know what we're trying to find. I think mean, we were to start the study, and then we would just automatically you see what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of like you're teaching at the same time while also we're going to study. Because you teach all right. all the now. <laughs> no, in reality. In reality I know it's such all right, you idea. know what? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I know it's such a good point. We don't stop. All right. Because we all come up with the questions. So don't be asking me extra tools when we start this, because I was going to go through the tools first and then. The point is that we're going to use the tools. Okay. All right. Now, I know how y'all are, so I'm going to be like, just wait till we cut. Say what the tools do while we ask the questions so that way we know, like, okay, this is. So we're going to start to study on cur curses. Yeah, curses. Um, I would just say it's better to start it off in King James. Because when we go to Blue Letter Bible, it's going to be in King James. So I would not be doing your word searches in NIV, Amplify, New King James. So please make that note. Start your word searches out in KJV.